All right, well, today we get to continue in our study series called I Am. What we're doing is we're looking at seven famous statements Jesus wrote. It's important to know this, that these are found in the book of John, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's good to know how to navigate your Bible. Seven statements specifically in the book of John where Jesus says, I am, just what it sounds like. If you say, I am, you're trying to reveal who you are. Jesus is trying to reveal himself to his audience. There's things that they don't know, they're unaware of that he wants to say. So he has seven statements. And uh, this is this week three. We looked at uh, three so far. How many of the I am's do you know? How many of the I am's can you kind of rattle off in your head? One out of seven, two out of seven, seven out of seven. I am. You ought to know at least two if you've come the past two weeks. So they'll be on the screens. First week we talked about I am the bread of life. Second week, Pastor Scott spoke on, I am the light of the world. Third is, I am the door. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the way, the truth, the life. I am the resurrection. And then, praise church, if you don't know number seven, um, we're sending you down, to the, down the road to another church. No, I'm joking. Uh, I, am, I am the vine. And we are the vine, you are the? Yeah, you are the branches. He's the vine. We are the branches. So what Jesus is doing is he's just disclosing who he is. How is he doing it? You just notice through metaphors. The metaphor is he, he's taking what people know and he's revealing something about himself that they don't know that is similar to what it is. And he's, he's saying things like, you know, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. So there's something about bread that he's trying to reveal to them. And to all my Caucasian friends, it's not that he's white, right? He's not white, he's Jewish. Hey, I'm the door. What's he trying to, to reveal about himself on the door? I am the, the good shepherd. And the good shepherd is the most personal, relational one because you have the door, you have a light, you have, um, you know, like a road or a street. In this, he's trying to reveal to himself that he is the good shepherd. It's similar to us saying, have you ever called someone in your family the rock? Like they're a rock. Or maybe you said that person was a a uh, breath of fresh air, those are metaphors that we're trying to use in comparing a person to an object or a thing so that there can be better understanding. And in this he says, I'm the good shepherd. But today is your lucky Sunday. It's BOGO Sunday. You didn't know you came on BOGO Sunday, huh? Because in this, in this passage, in this passage, he doesn't just say one I am, there's two I am's in that. And he also says, I am, I am the door. So we'll look at Predominantly, I'm the good shepherd, but we'll talk about the door as well. So why, why would he say I'm the good shepherd? Agrarian lifestyle, sheep around, people know what he's talking about. But why would he make himself a shepherd? Because we are, <laughs> we are sheep. You don't like that? I don't like it either. I, I, I mean, sheep's not a compliment, right? It's not the spirit animal that I wanted. Like, oh. I think I'd rather be a monkey than a sheep, right? I, I'll be a lion, I like a, the big eagle. That's what I do, I'd be, I'd be a big eagle. Uh, much better than a sheep because a sheep's defenseless. I mean, what's a sheep going to do to fend off a wolf? Go up, it has, has no fangs, has no big teeth, no horns, no, nothing, no, like no major kick, no major, uh, and they're defenseless. They're also directionless, directionless, easily get lost. Um, this is just many scriptures I can't pull off the top of my head. Um, we like sheep. There you go. We like sheep have gone astray, right? Why, why have gone astray? Because we're directionless. You're like, okay, yes, my husband's a sheep for sure. <laughs> Get lost doing anything. But we think about this, you think of a sheep, we think, oh, well, maybe it's not that bad. May, maybe, you know, they're cute. They're, they're cute and cuddly. Uh, sheep are, you know, they're innocent. So maybe a sheep's not so bad. So I was at my sister's yesterday for a birthday party. And... I was actually like leaving, walking out the door on the wall right before the door. I saw this, this painting and I, I, I said, I literally did this, took it off the wall, said, can I take this for a week? She said, of course, just do not damage it. Someone in our church painted it for us for Easter. I said, well, I, I want them to paint me one too. So just see, I can't even read the name. But it's, I see how much they would charge to have this because I said, I'm speaking on this tomorrow. And I, I would love to be able to show our people, it was like a cute little sheep, right? Oh, isn't that cute? Can you get a tight shot on that? Like a tight shot. Like, like zoom, zzz, no. There you go. Now you get my picture with the sheep? What was it good? Like, 
But see, we, that's what we like, sheep. Sheep are so cute and cuddly. No, sheep are dumb. <laughs> sheep get lost. They have, they, they have no way to fend off anyone. And what Jesus is saying is sheep need a shepherd for a reason. Anybody need a shepherd? I, 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 need, I need a shepherd. I need some guidance. I need someone to feed and, and lead me. <clears throat> so in this passage, if you're following along in, a, in a, like a, a real Bible, physical Bible, it's John 10. If not, you can flip to that. It'd be good to follow along. We also have, it, have the notes in the Praise Church app. So it's good to take notes. It's good to take notes. It's funny, you would never attend college classes. I don't think you would and not take notes. So we create a learning environment. We want to learn. You remember what, what you hear by writing things down. So it just helps. So Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Everybody in the audience is tracking with him. Exactly. They know what this is like. Someone's climbing over the fence, not good news. Someone's got a ski mask on, they're, they're up to, they're, they're a sheep rustler, not a, a shepherd. And he says, but he who enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. And then he leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. What is Jesus doing? Jesus is trying to his audience, his original audience, he's just trying to say, here's who I am. I am, and this is what, what, what I do. He says, verse 5, a stranger they will not follow but they will flee from. Why? They don't know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief, going back to what he mentioned, the, the first of the story, he says the thief comes only to kill, to still kill and destroy. Contrasting himself, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Take away life, one comes to give life. I am the good shepherd. There's, now, now there's a lot going on, right? He, he walks in, he goes to the gate, He's the door, now he's the shepherd. You can understand why they're, they're like going, what are you talking about? Like you keep jumping from this to this, all this symbolism, all this representation. And then he says, I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees a wolf coming and leaves, flees. The wolf snatches them, scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand. He cares nothing for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. Again, he's trying to reveal himself, self-disclosure. I know my own, my own know me just as the Father knows me. And I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. All right, sheep, shepherd, relationship. Not many shepherds here at Praise Church. So we have to dig in a little bit deeper to understand the relationship between these two entities, these two people. Um, now, now we can understand, we can understand what it's like to take care of animals because we have pets and we treat our pets like family, right? Some of you do. Some of you treat your pets like family. You got little coats, little embroidery coats with their names on it. Uh, they s sleep in your bed. They eat your food. They, they do all the things. You know what it is. Like, right, a shepherd is a keeper of the sheep. We have pets that we keep as well. I, I, I feed my dog. Well, I don't feed my dogs. My kids feed the dogs. Most of the time they get to eat every day. Most of the time. Uh, very skinny dogs. <laughs> um, I, we talk to them. We I talk to my dogs. Uh, I talk to them in normal voices. My other family, the, the other family members that live with me, they talk to them in very weird voices sometimes. So, uh, you know, I just talk to them normal. Uh, we, my, my dogs know my voice. Like when I come home today, I'm not going to walk in the door and say, you know, say something and my dogs are going to bark. They know my voice. Now you let somebody else, you let some Mormons knock on the door. Uh, you know, you let some Jehovah, whatever, whoever's canvassing the neighborhood at the time, they're, they're going to be barking. Mailman, it, because they don't know, they don't know that, that person's voice. I name the dogs. We name the dogs. I don't name the dogs now. My kids name the dogs. But when I was a kid, I named the dogs. I didn't name them good, and they weren't cool names, but they were descriptive names. I got, we had rabbits. I had rabbits in the city, in the city of Groves. Can you imagine that? I had rabbits. 
uh, it's where my dad taught me about the birds and the bees. <laughs> Six years old. Hey, son, let's go to the rabbit cage. Okay. Too soon. Too soon, dad. Um, but I named the rabbit, and I named the rabbit, really, remember, it's not a cool name, but it is a descriptive name, Fluffy. You know why I named him Fluffy? He was Fluffy. That's right. See, it's not cool, but descriptive. I named, I named the animals. I had a, I had a dog named Tippy. You know why it was Tippy? Had a tip on the end of his tail. <laughs> not cool, but descriptive. You've never met Tippy, but you know a little bit about Tippy. Uh, Tippy had a son named, uh, well, I named him t- the Tippy son, TJ. You know what that stood for? That's right, Tippy Jr. <laughs> There you go. So, you know, not, not, real, not real cool, but very descriptive, right? I named, now we have some cool names in the church. By the way, someone got a dog yesterday, and I saw they named, they named their dog Goose. Very, yeah, very confusing for that dog. <laughs> you know, it's like, the dog, what am I? What am I? Well, you're, you're Goose. Okay, whatever. Uh, there is someone in the church, they named their dog. This is the coolest dog name ever on my books. Named him Dioji. The dog's D-O-G. Y'all get it? The letter's D-O-G. D-O-G. I was like, well done. So we take care. So we can understand a little bit about shepherding from the idea that we take care of pets. We protect our pets. We talk to our pets. We, we treat them well. We, we feed them. Now what we're not going to do, what I'm not going to do, I'm not laying down my life for my pets. Jump in the fire, it sinks me and you. I'm not, saving, I'm not saving the dogs. So that's how Jesus opens talking about this, about his role. And then he opens up with this shadowy figure that's coming in over a fence, right? Any, anybody coming over a fence or over a or window and not through the door is up to, up to no good. And then he contrasts himself to this person. In verse 2 he says, but he who enters by the door, he's the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens, the gatekeeper would be God. The sheep hear the voice, calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. I love this part. I pray this over over me. I pray this over my kids. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. That would be a good confession to make. I do not know the voice of a stranger. I will not listen to the voice of the shepherd. I will listen to the voice of the good shepherd. I will not follow the voice of, a, of, of the stranger. So he says the sheep know his voice, which meaning the sheep can distinguish between the voice of the good shepherd and the stranger, which is very, very important. Because we're, you're, you're like me, I'm like you, we're going to hear many voices within a day, have many, very, many thoughts about ourselves, many thoughts about our life, about who we are, what's going on around us. And you're going to have voices coming in at all sides. You're going to have, you're going to have the thoughts of coming in. And you've got to ask yourself, where's this coming from? Who's speaking this? Is this the good shepherd? Would the good shepherd say this to me? Or is this the voice of a stranger that's come over the fence, come to kill, steal, and destroy? You have to challenge the thoughts. You have to challenge the voices and the, 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 the things that you hear. Because the voices are going to come. But do, do, you know, do you know your good shepherd enough to be able to hear their voice? Just like I could, I could pick out probably my family's voice from everybody in this room. I can have them talking, you talking, I can say, that's my wife's voice. That's my daughter's voice. Because I've been with them, I talk with them. I, are, are, are we getting to a point where we can identify the voice of God? And I'm not talking about just in, in tone, like, I'm talking about a vo- uh, an audible voice of God. I'm talking about in content. Would he tell you that, that you're, you're, you know, your, your best days are behind you? Would he tell you you ought to give up? Would he lead you to certain places that sin is okay? Is he going to, no, it's like, I'm a loser. No, that's the voice of a stranger. I'm not going to listen to the voice of the stranger. I'm going to listen to the voice of the good shepherd. But you have to have an awareness. right? If, if you came to me and you said, hey, Reg, your wife, your wife, I was talking to your wife today, and she told me that I was ugly. I say, well, <laughs> I'm joking. I wouldn't say I said, no, 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 my wife would never say that. Because I know the voice, and not, not just the, the, uh, the tone of my wife's voice, I know the content of my wife's voice. My, my wife would never say that to you. My wife would never tell you you're ugly. Now, she may tell me you're ugly, but she's not going to tell you. <laughs> she's not going to tell you you're ugly. She wouldn't do that either. Um, she's not going to do that. She's so sweet. Do you know the voice of the good shepherd? 
You hear things like, you know, no one cares for me. My, my past is too big. I'm not going to get over this. I'm not a, you know, it says you're more than a conqueror. You're not a conqueror. You're going to, you, this is too heavy for you. No, no, no. You've got to be able to identify. You've got to be able to say, hey, hey, that's the voice of a stranger. I'm not going to listen to that. You're going to get tested today. You're going to have the chance to be able to say, I'm not going to listen. Bah, 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 bah. I'm not going to listen to the voice of, of a stranger. I'm going to listen to the voice of the good shepherd. He says he calls his sheep by name. Simply means he knows you individually. You didn't get lost in the flock. There's a lot of people here today. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows exactly what's happening within your family, within your career, within your finances. He knows everything about it. And then he says he leads you out. Absolutely love this. Meaning that he goes before me. And he's going before me trying to lead me to a place of green pasture. We could break that down in symbolism of safety, of provision, of wholeness. That's my good shepherd. No, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, he what? Leads me. He leads me, meaning that he's going before me. Now, we know we have a good shepherd who is a good leader. The question is, are you a good follower? Are you a rogue sheep? Well, I really don't feel like going there. Okay, well, the shepherd's going there and he's leading you there. Whether you want to or not, are you a good follower? I don't feel like forgiving. I want to live in unforgiveness. I, I, I just want to be me. Well, the, the, the question isn't, do we have a good leader or a good shepherd? The question is, are you, will you be a good follower, a good sheep? So now at this point in the text, the audience is not picking up what Jesus is laying down. Uh, their eyes like that, he's got the emoji eyes of like that, like surprise, what's going on, so much happening. So Jesus says it again, verse 6, this figure of speech, Jesus used with them. They did not understand what he was saying to them, so Jesus again said to them, almost the same thing that he said in verse 1, truly, truly, I say to you, now he says, I'm the door, I'm the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, probably referencing the Pharisees, they're thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am, I am the door. Like I am revealing something to you about myself. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and he will go out and find pasture. So now there is a function about a door that Jesus is comparing himself to and saying, I, I want to relate myself to this. What is it about the door that Jesus wants people to know? I'm the entrance. I'm, I'm the way that you get in I am your access point to, to what? Well, you have a first century uh, audience that, that's Jews. They're steeped in Judaism. They would have known about the blessings of Abraham. So some scholars believe that he's talking about, he's trying to say to them, now I am the, the door or access point to the blessings of Abraham. To us it may be, I am the door or the access point to the new covenant. Like, it's no longer by law. No longer, you know, the, the law's not good enough. It can just show you how bad you are. I am, I am the door. I am by grace. You can, you can come to God through me. It's a better arrangement. Or you can approach, I am the door to the person of the promises of God. So I told you you're going to get two I am statements. You're actually going to get three. Because he also says in John 14 and 6, I am the way. Right? Almost similar to door. Your door one way in, but I am the way one route to. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one comes to the Father. Yeah, except. Now you go except. Some people say, well, oh, that's very presumptuous. How egotistical for some man to say, you can't get to God but by me. How, how prideful. How narrow. How exclusive. How how. You know, you're, you're excluding everybody else. You know, like, what about all the other prophets that's come in? What about all the sages and, and spiritual leaders? And Jesus is saying, you know, it's not presumptuous if you, if you can pay the price that I have to pay. There's a demand. There's a demand upon the life of Christ to be able to provide access to God. And that is that he would bear our sins. Because who can approach God? The psalmist asked that question. The psalmist says, who can come to God? Who can approach God? And then he answers that. He says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Let me ask you, how are you going to approach God? You got clean hands and a pure heart? You have any way to, look, you know yourself. <laughs> I know myself. I, can't, I cannot approach God the way that I was. I have no way of cleaning up the sins 
the evil, the things that have lived with me, the things that I've done. And so it took someone to do that for me. And so it's not presumptuous or exclusive when Jesus says, I'm willing to lay down my life for my sheep so that they can have access to God. In fact, that's, that's very kind because what, he's, what he is doing is he's saying you could spend your life trying to get to God by a lot of different doors, but they're all, you're going to knock on it, it's not going to open. It's not going to take you to God. I'm just giving you a heads up, fellas, maybe what he was saying to his audience. I'm giving you a heads up that I want you to get to God and I can meet the demands that it takes to get to God. So I'm going to provide a way for you to get there. Just wanting them to know that that I am, I am the door, that he is your access to God. And I am so grateful that I have access to God. In fact, I have 24 access to God, 24 hour access to God. So, so good that any time I can, I can approach the throne of grace, I can, I can ask God for help, I can go by myself. Because you know why that's good? Because I need God at some inconvenient hours. Anybody else? Anybody ever needed God at 5 a.m. in the morning? I mean, I've had some sleepless nights. There was a, a couple of years ago, dealt with some anxiety. Man, at 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning, not being able to go to sleep. I needed to access God. I didn't have time to pull out the phone and call someone and get a voicemail and call a pastor or a priest or some spiritual person to say, I need help to get to God. No, I needed, I needed access to God right now. There's been time in my own car I've needed access to God now. Anybody ever been to Walmart? Yeah, you need access now. <laughs> I was in the hospital a couple weeks ago with a family member. We needed access now. You have time to call a friend, didn't have time to call a staff member, didn't have time. It's like, I, I, God, God, we need you. We need you now. And so I can boldly come to your throne of grace and ask you for help. Why? Because Jesus was the door. He provided an entrance, an access point, a way in to God. You can access him in your, at work, thank God. You can access him in your car, you can access him in the hospital. And, and this is not recommended, but if you get there, you can access him from jail. And, it, and he has. And it says that you can access and find green pastures. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, I have 24 hour access to God. The, the writer of Hebrews Hebrews is a, uh, man, it's a rich, rich, rich book. Hebrews talks about the Old Testament and how Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. Actually, it says things like Jesus is better, Jesus is superior than the angels. Jesus is the better high priest. In fact, the week after Easter, we are, we are diving into a 15-week study. For 15 weeks, we're going to be studying the book of Hebrews. Got journals coming. You can get a journal uh, that you can follow along and write in. We want us to go deep into the book of Hebrews. But the writer of the Hebrews says, therefore, since we have a great high priest, and he's talking about Jesus, he ascended, went back into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly, hold firmly embrace the faith that we profess. We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, yet just as we are. The pain you felt last week, he felt it. The temptation you felt last week, he felt it. Yet he did not sin. Verse 16, let us then, since he's ascended, since he has ascended, since he has experienced everything that we have but without sin, let us then approach the throne of grace, or God's throne of grace, with confidence. With confidence. You don't have to go with your head down and go scared. No, with confidence. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's why I love that we have a prayer team. That's why I love this. Did you see that this morning? You see how many people were up here? It was filled. Pastor Scott was asking people to come up and, and, and pray and to feel, you know, so that we would have enough people to pray with. That's what we should be doing. Shouldn't prayer be a first response, not a last resort? Like, well, God, I'll go to you after I try to work this out. No. Go right to him. Jesus has been the door. We have access to the, the one that spoke everything into existence. We can come boldly. We can come with confidence. Why? To find help, to find help in our time of need. Then Jesus goes back to the thief. And he only talks about the thief that's coming over the fence. He says, well, this is how the thief was coming in. But let me tell you why 
Here's his motives, here's his intentions. You know this well, John 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus says, I don't want to just tell you that this sheep rustler, this thief is coming in, but he's coming for a purpose, and it's not good purposes. Now, he's trying to get his audience to know something, but he's also trying to get us to know something. The Word of God is inspired. It has power to speak to us right now. So what's he trying to tell us? That, that there's also a thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Wants to steal from your family. Wants to steal from you. Wants to put things on you. Thoughts in your head. That would scatter you from the, from the flock. That would, would take you away. Listen, if you, if you knew, if you, if you were at your house and you saw someone that kept on uh, canvassing or scoping out your, your, your home, your digs, you're not like, you're going to be alert, right? You just know, someone's going to steal from me? Like, y'all are going to get on, you know, get on that neighborhood chat and, did you see the blue car? Like, you're going to be alert to this. You're going to be telling people because you're not going to open the door and leave the windows open. No, you're going to be alert. Because you know that someone is coming to steal from you. Jesus is saying, you have someone that has come to kill, steal, and destroy. 1 Peter 5, 8, Peter writes, he says, be sober-minded. Be watchful. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, prowls. That's not a good word. Like a roaring lion. What's he doing? He's seeking someone to devour. That's what Jesus is trying to paint for us. He's trying to give us a good picture. Now, his audience was tracking. They, they know exactly what's going on. About six months ago, um, I, I was online, and I, I saw that we had a robbery spree in our neighborhood. It was all in the news. In fact, I saw it on KFDM. And, you know, I saw like, wow, that's my street. That's our street. And, uh, and so, like, a lot of homes got hit. A lot, a lot of, not a lot of homes, a lot of cars, trucks got hit. And a couple, couple got stolen. I know one truck got stolen for sure. And so some people that we knew, you know, they, they, they'd been hit up. Now, the problem with this is when I was reading this news that has happened, we were on vacation in Colorado, which is not what you want to read when you're away. And, you know, if, if thieves, if you're watching, please, uh, we don't take a lot of preventative measures at our house. It's like, it's pretty wide open. But, um, you know. My, my idea with the car is, why would I lock the car if I got a thief coming? They're just going to break the window. So just don't leave anything in it. Let them open the door. See that he, well, this guy ain't got nothing. And then just shut the door, and now I don't have to replace the window. That's my theory. I don't know if it's good. I'm sticking with it. So here we are. I'm away. I'm, I'm like late at night. It's like, holy cow, we got some thieves in our neighborhood. Taking cars and trucks, and no one's there. Wait, someone is there. My mom was there. Right? And so, <laughs> yes, I was like, shoo, sweet, mom's there. Because mom lives in a, uh, like, we've got a little apartment next to our home. And she lives in that apartment. And I was like, okay, mom's there. I'm not scared. I'm not scared for mom. Because I know this, I'm scared for the thieves. <laughs> That's right. You got a mom like that? Like, don't underestimate the wrath of a scared grandma. Like, man, mom's going to, Mimi's going to have them on their knees reciting the sinner's prayer. Like, don't steal, don't steal. Ten commandments, return sevenfold. Yes, yes, man. <laughs> like, I'll give it all back. And so we get back home. We get back home, and my youngest says, you know, Dad, um, are they going to come to our house? It's like, Remy, this would be the worst time. <laughs> This would be the worst time for anybody to canvas our neighbor. Anybody that nobody recognizes, they're getting blasted, right? In the neighborhood watch, everybody's like following people. It's like, this is Southeast Texas. They're loaded, right? They're, 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 they're ready. In fact, they're, they're waiting. They're waiting. They got the cameras up, they're waiting. This would be the wrong time because they're vigilant and they're looking. And that's what, that's what, Jesus is trying to get to, and that's what Peter's getting to. We need to be vigilant. We need to be looking. We need to be loaded because we do have an enemy. He's coming in hot. And he's coming in hot to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus wouldn't say this if he wanted us to remove the, some of the truth in that. He's not saying this to be an alarmist or to be, um, what, what do you call that when you make something better than it is? Um, sensational. He's not trying to be sensational. He's trying to be reality. And we all know it to be, we all know this to be true, that we have an enemy that comes in. My question would be, where are you being stole from right now? Or are you being stole from right now? 
and you're not even aware of it? Where are you discouraged? Where do you think life can't get any better? You've gone, you've gone too far. Or anxious. What are you anxious about? What are you anxious about? What are you insecure about? What are you, what are you, what are you addicted to? What, what, are you lusting after things that, that shouldn't be lusted after? Where, where, where's the enemy coming in to kill? Because we've, we, I'm, I'm sure you've seen this in your own family, where the, the evil one will come in and just try to break the family unit apart, tear you apart, put things in your head about yourself. Call, it, we, the enemy is so brutal. He'll tell you, he'll tell you, you don't even deserve to live. That's a mean enemy. That is a mean enemy. To come in and, and, and say, well, well I'm make, you, make you lonely. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so lonely. I have nobody. Do you know that, that one of the ploys, one of the ploys of the wolf to the pack of sheep is to scatter the sheep? It's a ploy. And the reason why it's a ploy is because there's protection in numbers, even if you're defenseless. See a bunch of people over there. That's why they don't you know, don't walk in the parking lot alone. Have a friend, have a buddy, or right? all, all those things. Because there's strength in numbers. The wolf wants to come and scare and fear and scatter the sheep. Because if he can scatter the sheep, then he can isolate a sheep. That's why Scripture says, "Do not forsake the assembling of yourself together," because there's power, there's protection in numbers, there's protection in being in the house of God on Sunday. Amen. Yeah. It's important. It's not just a thing to do. It's to be a part of. You're like, well, I don't know. I've been in Christian groups before and it's just too messy. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's messy. You're messy. <laughs> I'm messy. <laughs> My family's messy. Life is messy. It's like, you know, pull away. I'm going to pull away and be by myself. And we're just going to do this Christian thing all by myself. No, no, no. That's what he's talking about. What you have done is you've listened to the lies of the enemy. He has scattered you. And now you are isolated. And you are making yourself, you're in jeopardy now for to be an attack and have no, no help. No one cares for me. No, that's, that's the lie of the enemy. No one knows how, how I feel. No one knows what it's like to be me. I think I'll just stay home on Sunday and I can podcast. You know, there's some great preachers. I'll listen to this person, this person. And I'll watch online. We can watch online. Listen, all in the safety of your home out of the protection of the flock, though. It's very, very important not, not to allow yourself... To, to get isolated from, from the pack. So Jesus then goes on and he says, I came that they may have life. Have it abundantly. And other translations, I come that they have my life and have it to the, anybody would know what that would be. Like the NIB I think would say the, to the full. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand. No one cares for the sheep and does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay my life down for the sheep. I lay my life down for the sheep. So just going back, and about to send you guys to close this out, but I, I wanted to like cement a f just a couple more points. He says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. You know, so people say, well, is he talking about life now or life eternal? Both. If you would take that word, I have come, that Jesus spoke, I have come that they may have life. And if you would look at it in the original Greek, it would be Zoe, Z-O-E. And that means both life here and life eternal, meaning that I have come to give you life now, quali the quality of life, a quality of life right now. I've come that you can have vitality and you can have wholeness and you have peace now and, and to come. But I've come that you may have life and that you would have it, as, as it says, to abundantly or, or to the full. And then he, then he ends and he says, I lay down my life for the sheep, which means that he is willing to put himself in between you and the stranger. Where the hireling would say, oh, there, there's a stranger 
you're the sheep, you stay there, or I'm going to flee. And Jesus says, no, 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 there's a stranger. Before you get to him or her, you have got to go through me. And if it takes me to lay down my life for my sheep, I'm willing to do it. That's the shepherd, that's the good shepherd that you have to watch over you. So Jesus is trying to communicate. I mean, we, we think about a shepherd, a, a good shepherd and a good, a good person uh, that would take care of their, their pets. They're going to feed the pets. They're going to, to protect their pets. Um, they're going to lead them and go before the pets. And you say, oh, that's so cute. And you, you remember, do you remember the, uh, the picture of Jesus with the sheep on his shoulder? Y'all ever seen that? He's just carrying the sheep back to the pack. It says, Scripture says that he would leave the 99 to go after the one. You remember that? Have you ever thought about why he would leave 99 to go get one? Like, why would you risk 99 for the sake of one? Just, just count your losses. That's, that's not bad. Uh, the reason is, is because there's protection in the pack of 99. And there's isolation in the pack of one. And he would leave that. But I was reading, I was reading uh, some commentators and some some information about it and it was saying but we we think it's so nice you know you think you're so so let's just let me just role play a shepherd like if i'm, I'm the shepherd here and you're, you're sheep i'm like going like wait wait somebody's missing somebody here is missing we gotta we gotta put them down so we can call them this week you know and that, that's how vigilant and aware he is of his sheep like, you know, like, like Bob's not here. Wait, Bob, Bob used to sit right there. Where's, where's Bob at today? I, I'm missing Bob. And so he identifies that someone's missing. This is a good shepherd. He's trying to reveal himself. He's got good shepherds. Like Bob's out. Bob's gone. Now, now he's willing to say, hey, guys, y'all stay here, and I'm going to leave, and I'm going to go find Bob. And I'm going to look. And we think it's so cute that, you know, he's got like a sheep biscuit or something in his pocket. You know, like, you know, draw the sheep real easy. No, sometimes the shepherd had to run after the sheep because the sheep is crazy. You ever felt like God ran after you? It's like, I, I know of people, look, I know of people here in this church that, that God has walked into crack houses and said, you're getting out of here. Walked into hotels. So you shouldn't be doing this. There is no place that your shepherd will not walk. And it is not always super clean. It's not like the sheep's coming back on the shoulders all white and, and the shepherd's all white and everybody's smiling. No, there's some blood there. There's some dirt. There's some dirtiness. But the shepherd is willing to get into the mess and roll around, tackle you if he has to, flip you over like mutton button this if he needs to, to wrap your, wrap your legs together, throw you and say, you, whether you want to go back or not, you're going back because you have a good shepherd. That's the good shepherd that you have. I'm so grateful for that because there's some times that I needed, I needed him to get in there and get dirty. And so Jesus is trying to reveal himself to an audience, and he's also trying to reveal himself to you right now, that you have a good shepherd. He'll feed you, and he'll give you good stuff. He'll give you good stuff. Stuff for your man. He'll lead you. He'll go right before you. He's not going to drive you. He's going to lead you. And he's also going to protect you. And when it's time to go after you, he ain't willing to, well, let's go. You want to get dirty? I can get dirty. Because if I have to lay down my life. In fact, if the shepherd has to become a lamb, I'll become a lamb. That's exactly what he did. So that we could have access. The shepherd became a lamb. So the sheep could have access to God. Give his own life. Amazing. 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 And once you stand with me, I, I want to call you to, to a couple of responses. Just stand. I mean, no, we shouldn't just listen to the word of God, but we ought to do what it says. Amen? And James 1 22, don't just hear the word, but do what it says. So we're not here to hear just a good little sermon. I'm not a, I'm not a good entertainer. I'm not a performer. I'm not an entertainer. So we present the word of God as best as we can. And now we say, what do we do with it? What do you do with it? How does this apply to your life? I'm going to give you three, three things to think about. And then we're going to sing a song that you're going to want to save your playlist. It's going to be incredible, and you can make, make a commitment. Here's your three things. Are you, how well are you distinguishing the voice of the good shepherd versus the stranger? He's coming. He's talking to you tomorrow. He'll tell you all the bad things about yourself. Are you going to believe that? He's coming to tell you about what you can't do. Or you have the voice of the good shepherd. Number two, 
Have you allowed the wolf to isolate the sheep, to isolate you, scatter you, pulled out of groups, pulled out of church, pulled away from Christian friendships? Come on back. Get on back into the flock. And then number three, and this is for people who you're like, just don't have a relationship with God and you feel so far from Him. Um, has He become your door? Have you walked through the door? Have you had access into the throne room of God? And if not, today is an incredible day to say, God, I, I, I want you to be my shepherd. I know that you're the door. You laid down my life. And I, I, I need you as my shepherd to save me. It would be a great place to start. So let's sing, this, let's sing this song together as you like, let this stuff sink from here to here and how this actually applies to your life. Let's sing. <laughs>